G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here for another Microsoft Word tutorial. In this video, we are going to be looking at printing, exporting, and sharing. They're the only things we're going to look at, and I'm going to focus primarily on the printing side of things. So, I've got the same document that I have for the last video. This thing has been made. It's got a fair few pages in it, and that's why I wanted to use this one. And we're going to be going back into the file menu. So let's click up on the left hand corner and let's go down to the print page. All right. So printing by default can be quite simple or it could be quite complicated or pretty advanced, I guess. So by default, if you just leave things as they are, you are going to print off the full document that you've got open and you are going to print every single page and one copy of every single page. Okay, so if I just leave it as default, I click this big blue print button up in the top left hand corner, done. It'll print, hopefully print it off. If you have any errors, you might need to talk to your printer or your IT support person, depending on who's nicer. But anyway, the second thing I will talk about is the copies button. Okay, now if I set this to two copies or even three copies, what I'm doing is I'm essentially printing off multiple copies of every single page. And you have to remember that. If I go to two copies, it's not just going to print two copies of the first page. It's going to print two copies of page one, page two, and page three. Right? So please bear that in mind. If you go ten copies, whoopsie doodle, I just accidentally pressed enter when I did that. I'm so used to pressing enter. Now essentially it's going to print ten copies of all three pages. So it means I'm going to end up with 30 pieces of paper. I'm just going to go back to one copy just in case I do actually end up printing. Thankfully, my printer's offline. That's why nothing actually happened to me. Now, the second option, as I just sort of talked about there, is your printer. If this is the printer you want, you're all good to go. You can click print, and off you go. However, if this is not the printer you want, and you've got another printer you need to print to, then you would click the drop-down box, and you would pick the printer that's right for you. You can see I've got tons of printers here, because I'm an IT support person at work, and I have to have a fair few printers at one time. So let's say, for instance, that I need to print to this Epson. All you need to do is click on him and click the print button. Okay, and it will start printing that document again. Now, one thing you will notice is that this one's got a little green tick on it, and this Epson doesn't. That doesn't mean anything about how good the printer is or how effective the printer is. This little green tick tells me that that's my default printer. This means this is going to be the printer that I happen. Oh, sorry, this is going to be the printer that appears every time I go to print by default. Okay, so if I choose Epson, I click print. It's not going to print because it's offline. I go back to print. It's going to still have Epson there, but if I close Word and then go to print again, the Canon is going to be the one that appears in the list first. Okay, so this little green tick is your default printer, and to change that. Okay, what you can do there is actually you have to change this in Windows, but I can quickly show you that. So to change your default printer, I'm going to go to my start menu. I'm going to click on devices and printers. Come down and where's the Epson? There's my Epson. You right click on that bad boy and you say set as default printer. You see the green tick changes over. You can even see the green tick and word change as well. I'm going to go back to the Canon though because that's my home printer. And you can see it updates automatically in Word, which is really nice. Okay. Now let's say, for instance, there's some color. You can see there's a little blue text down there, and I don't want any blue to print because I'm running out of blue ink or I'm running out of colored ink. Then what you want to do is you may want to go to the printer properties sometimes. So if I click on printer properties, you've got all these, and this is actually quite annoying to demonstrate because this changes per printer. And I'll show you a couple of the ones I've got up here so you can see the differences. But by default, this is my Canon settings page. And if I didn't want color, I would simply go grayscale printing. And you can see the, D, the little preview here has showed me that it'll go black and white. If I go OK, then it's going to print as a black and white document now. Let me show you another print properties. Let's go to the Epson. And you can see the whole thing is different again. But you can see there's still grayscale. OK, you can still change multi-page grayscale and all that kind of stuff. There's lots and lots of settings. You pretty much just gonna have to learn them by printer. Okay, but for now, that's all I wanted to show in that. Now this is going to be probably the most important setting that you ever, ever change. So let's look at this one for a little bit. Right now, I've got it to print all pages, which means print. it's gonna print page one, two, and three 
all in one big hit. All right. However, there is actually a little bit more that you can choose from. There's heaps and stuff. I'm only going to focus on these top four because these are probably the most important ones. So if I go print current page, it doesn't mean this one that's demonstrated here on the right. Okay. The current page is the one that's on my screen at the moment. So this is my current page, which is page one. If I go file, print, just current page, it's only going to print page one. It will not print page two or three at all. Okay, I can even, and that's actually really, really handy sometimes if you made a stuff up and you need to print one page. But let's say, for instance, I need to print off pages two and three only. Okay, I could do, go back, change the page, print just this page, really, really annoying. You could just see I've got custom print, okay? And this is quite interesting because now I can specify what kinds of pages that I want to print. Yeah. Why is the info button not working? I was going to show you something. But anyway, if I want to print just page one, then you just type in one and you click print and that will only print page one. If I want to print page one and two, okay, I can go one comma two and that will print off pages one and two. If I want to include pages one to three, I can actually type in one hyphen three. I know that's not much of a custom because that's all three pages, but I just wanted to show you that. I can also do the same for two to three. So just the pages two to three. So let's say you've got pages 17 to 85. You can do that as well. And you can just type in those numbers, click print, and it will only print between those, or protein those numbers, including 17 and 85. Now, one interesting thing, let's say I wanted to print one, page one and page three. Okay, well the way you do that is you type in one, comma, space, three. And that'll print pages one and three, but not number two. Okay, one other thing that's really, really cool is let's say I want to print one, three all the way to seven you can actually go one comma three hyphen seven and that will actually print all those pages skipping over page two so custom print can be extremely handy this time around anyway i'm just going to change that back to print all pages because generally that's what you want to do down here we've got print one-sided so when you print your pages are going to come out just on the top now if your printer can do both sides you can actually do that there's actually two ways printers can do these things. So the default print one sided, it's going to print on the top, every single page is printed and you're done. Print both sides. Interestingly enough, some printers will print off the top and it will only print every odd page. What it asks you to do then is reinsert the paper upside down and then it prints the second or the even pages on top of the page. Well, at the bottom, because you put it in upside down. So that way you get all the odd pages on one side and the even pages on the other side. Some printers have the ability to print on both sides at the exact same time. It just depends on how expensive your printer is. But that's what this setting is basically doing. And there it is, manually print both sides. So if you can print both sides automatically, do it. If, you can, if you're comfortable doing the manual print on both sides, give it a go. I'd suggest you test with just a couple of pages first before you go and print off 100 pages and stuff it up. So that's really, really handy sometimes if you're doing booklets or big things. Collated, let's say for instance, I've got a booklet, three pages big, and I wanna make 10 copies of the bugger. So 30 pages in total. If I click collated, it is gonna print page one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, all the way up to the 30th page. If I go uncollated, it's gonna print page one, 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 two, 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 two. So it basically is going to print off 10 copies of page one, 10 copies of page two, and 10 copies of page three. This might be really handy if you've got handouts on each page that you want to give to people. But by default, collated is generally going to be the one that you use. Next setting, portraits, up and down, landscape, left and right. That's it. Okay, this is actually just a print setting. If I go, whoa, if I go back to my document, it changes it, apparently. <laughs> you know what, that's new to me, so that's really cool. Anyway, 
let's go back to orientation because that's the way this fits. So that's just something to note there. If you want to print up or down or left and right. So height ways or width ways. Then next is the size of your document. Now you can see it's defaulted the letter, which is a very strange setting. And I think it must be the printer that's defaulting to that. Because if I go to Canon, yeah, it goes to letter for some reason. Why is it going to letter? A4 should be the default. A4 is a regular piece of paper, as some people know. Letter, not so much. Huh. Anyway, if you are printing on letterheads, if you're actually printing letter sizes or something different, A3 perhaps, you're going to choose your different size just in there. Next, your margins. So the margins are actually how big this white space is around your page. Okay, By default, you get an inch, which is 2.54 centimeters on all sides, top, left, right, and bottom. If you don't like that, if that's too big for you, you can go narrow. And you can see that it's all of a sudden gotten even, even smaller, which is half the size. I think it's half an inch at this point, 1.27. That's about right. You got wide ones, which is just stupid of two inches, and mirrored. Not too bad. Anyway, play around with those settings. Figure out the ones that you like the most. By default, generally an inch looks nice in this one. All right. And finally, we can scale. We can be buggers and we can scale things. So what two pages per sheet means is that it's going to scale down one page and print it on the left-hand side of your page and then scale down the right-hand page and print it on the right-hand side of an A4 sheet. So this will be one A4 sheet. Okay, let's see. No, nah, it's not going to give you a preview of that. No. And we can go even larger, or sorry, even smaller, I should say. And you can see that it's going to be pretty crazy. These are basically, if you've got lots and lots of pages and you need to keep them small, probably not a great idea if you need to be able to read all the text on the pages to scale them. But anyway, all of that done, that's a lot of settings. I'm not going to go page setup because I'm going to do that in a future video. That is your print dialogue. Lots of settings, lots of different things you can do, and lots of things that you should play with that I recommend. I really recommend have a go at like your one two-sided printing, have a go at your custom print ranges, and give that a go. Now, I keep moving around and I keep scrolling to different pages, and I haven't explained how I'm doing that. Now, you could either do that through clicking on these arrows down here, going to the different pages, or I can use the scroll wheel on the mouse. Scroll down and scroll up. Sorry about that, I haven't really explained that. And then you've got your zoom bar down here. And these are just previews showing you how big it is. And I can also do fit to screen, which is that little button there. Anyway, that's the print dialogue pretty much done. If you've got any more questions on that, please pop them down the bottom. I'm happy to answer them, as you know. If I go down to, let's have a look at share and export I should be talking about. Share is if you would like to share it to different people, invite them to work on the documents, email people, presentation online, or post them on a blog. They're pretty straightforward. So if I wanted to email it to, it, to somebody, I can send them as an attachment, send it as a fax, pretty straightforward. Okay, if I click on send as attachment, it's going to open up, well, I do have an email program, it's just not. <laughs> it's just not what, Microsoft Word likes. I've got Gmail as my default. Anyway, so you would put in the email address you want to send it, and you could put a message and a heading or subject and send it off. Post to blog. If you've got a WordPress, a blogger, or something like that, you can actually just post this straight away. It takes a little bit of setting up to do. Maybe I'll show it off in a future video, but that's basically what the share parts do. Finally, export. If you need to export this because somebody has a Mac computer, which doesn't support Word documents or they've got a Linux computer, you can save it as a very generalized format. So PDF or XPS are fairly universal formats and can be opened, yeah, as it says, on viewers on the web. So if you go create PDF or XPS, it asks you, where do you want to save it? First, by default, it saves it as a PDF. Let's say, for instance, don't like PDF, you can actually change it. XPS right there. The difference is PDF is a personal document format and it um, it's designed to try and protect the content in your document and make it look nice at the same time. And XPS is a universal printing format. 
So you can take it to pretty much any computer in the world and print it off. And again, it is pretty well protected and fairly uneditable. You can get programs to edit these too, but I'll just add that in there. And you would click publish. And it's opening up my document because it wanted to. And that's it. So that's it for this video, everybody. I hope you learned something. If not, I don't know, everything. That'd be great. But like, comment, subscribe down the bottom. I'd really like if you could help me out there. And thank you very much for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one, everyone. Bye-bye for now.